Hello everybody! Welcome to another episode of Reacting Reddit, where real humans read, react, and summarize stories from Reddit. Let's get at it. Today we're going to be talking about people's survival stories. This question and post was originally by Shad Dauk, and it is, Have you ever been in a serious survival situation? The first reply is by Happy Soda. I have one. It won't help the book you're trying to write, though. I was in San Diego on vacation, and I went to the beach and swam out into the sea. I'm a pretty strong swimmer, so I had no fear of the water. Everything was going as I expected until I was trying to return to the shore. Instead of going straight back, I started swimming towards a pier. I wanted to see what was going on there. Before I knew it, I felt myself being dragged into a vortex unable to swim out. The more I paddle, the worse it got. Soon, I was missing breaths and started to swallow water. I thought I was going to die. In a last ditch effort, I let myself sink underwater so I can get my bearing and make a final dash. I pretty much did everything wrong up to that point. But luckily, my last blind dash just happened to be cross current. After several breaths and some reorientation, I was able to swim perpendicular to the direction of the waves and away from the vortex and let them carry me back to shore. That was the closest I have ever been to acknowledged near-death scenario. Whew, way to turn people off swimming, huh? Pagan Za says, I've been caught in a riptide three times and I had to be rescued three times. I've also once got a cramp while snorkeling quite far out. Luckily, it was on a reef, so I managed to balance on one foot on a rock and just kind of stand there till the cramp went away. Then did a couple hundred meter doggy paddle to get back to the shore. That was actually scarier than the riptide events. Because it took longer, I guess? I wonder why it was scarier. Shit eater. <laughs> it's spelled ch like cheese, chit, and then eater. Like, looked totally innocent till I said it out loud. He tricked me. Evening time, riding a dirt bike home down a trail I had only traveled once before. I'd forgotten about a trench someone had dug to keep cars off the trail, and in the dim evening, I ended up not seeing it until it was too late. I blacked out on impact, woke up with a tingling sensation in my leg. It was quite broken with a compound fracture. I was pretty much in the middle of nowhere, mid 80s era farmland country living and I was only 14. I could see a farmhouse off in the distance and I started to crawl, dragging my leg by what flesh remained through a cow pasture and eventually a gravel road until just before reaching a house, a dump truck drove by and saw me struggling and I blacked out. In and out of consciousness throughout the ambulance ride, six hours of initial surgery to set and clean the leg, four weeks of hospital, it sucked. On top of that, the bone became infected and the flesh rotted away in the cast. So when it was time to change casts due to atrophy, it was a green smelly mess of pus and slime. Another couple of weeks in the hospital and a Hickman catheter to self-medicate for four months. Oh, by the way, they insert the Hickman catheter when you're good and awake. Another great experience at 14. Now, literally 30 years later, all I have is a nasty scar. The docks rocked the house. I tell people it's a shark bite. Had my kids going for years. <laughs> That's funny. Next story is by Naheen123. I'm not sure if this is a survival story, but when I was 16 or 17, I was on my way home very late, around 4 a.m., with five of my friends. As we are walking, this white Cherokee Jeep stops abruptly behind us, and three men get out. Our instincts kicked in and everyone started running, including me. Unluckily, all five of my friends run in one direction while I run in the opposite direction. As I'm trying to evade, my leg trips and I slip. One of the guys grabs hold of me, throws me down, and tells me to hand over my cell phone. I say, no. A second guy who was a bit chubby throws a can of beer at me and then punches me. I was pretty sure he was drunk, talking in gibberish. I hand over my cell phone, thinking these guys are just looking to mug me and will probably leave me alone. Then the third guy comes to me and tells me to get in the jeep. Now I know for sure I'm getting kidnapped. 
As he tries to drag me along, my instincts kick in. I go limp and pretend to have an asthma attack right there in the middle of the road. The third guy is confused. The chubby one starts making a worrying face and tells his friends they better leave. I lie there for a good two or three minutes acting dead before I get up. Now here's the kicker. I find a wallet. It belonged to the first guy who had taken my cell phone. This man was 18 and he worked for the Ministry of Defense. I run to a random building and knock on the first door I see and call my relatives. We go to the police station and file a report and get him at the station. He ends up coming to the station with my cell phone and a receipt claiming that I had thrown rocks on his window so he wanted to compensate by talking the phone. The cops didn't buy it and gave him a long lecture. And that's it. No jail, no nothing. I did get a paper containing his identity, assuring that if this happened again, he was going to jail. It was wrong from my part that I didn't mention that these guys tried to kidnap me as well, because I was traumatized and it was the first time I ever got into such big trouble. All I wanted was to get it done with and go home. The funny part is I didn't even get grounded, but I never went out late at night for the next two years after that incident. Nisprimunk says, the same thing happened to me, but my friend didn't share. I did my best to spoon him, but didn't really help. It's kind of a dumb story now, thinking about it. Three night hike on the AT with my friend reading the map wrong, and we missed a shelter where we would have made a fire. We kept going and eventually made it to a state park parking lot around 8 and set up our tents. The ranger says you can sleep there, but no fires. Next thing you know, it drops to like 20 degrees and I don't have a sleeping bag. It was the coldest I've ever been. Huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, if I was lost and I found a parking lot, I, I, would, I would make a fire in the parking lot. You know I mean, that increases the chance someone comes and tells you off and then you're like, okay, please save me. Sorry about the fire. <laughs> like, I mean, maybe they weren't lost though. Nova G's 500 says, I don't know if this is what you're looking for, but I was backpacking in Europe. I was in Rome. I didn't realize what time it was and I had missed my train. So in the middle of the night, I had nowhere to go and I slept in the train station, which is pretty much open to the street. I was half asleep on the ground and I sensed somebody near me. I opened my eyes to a group of gypsies standing over me and I believe they were gonna try and grab my bag or pickpocket me. So I freaked out, I jumped up and started screaming and pulled my fist back like I was going to hit them and they ran in all different directions. They continued to follow me that night, watching me from a distance. Needless to say, I didn't sleep that night. The funny thing is, at the time I was feeling sorry for myself and at that time, of all songs that could have come on in the train station in Rome, was Everybody Hurts by R.E.M. <laughs> Music has a wonderful sense of... Uh timing, doesn't it? This next reply is by Chibler1954. A couple of years ago, I decided I would go out and spend a few days in the wilderness near my house. I live in the middle of nowhere. So I got my pack together, including all the emergency stuff and the essentials, had a rifle and ammo, as well as a bunch of shit to f ice fish with. So I could hunt, but also had spare food supplies. Drove out to where I wanted to essentially wander around and camp. I knew the area well. People knew where I was going, and since I was solo, I kept my phone and GPS locator on. I had a map and a compass as well. Well, anyway, trip goes great, and I'm hoofing it out three days later. At this time, it's below zero, but I'm properly dressed, so I'm like, whatever. Well, I'm walking out, and I see the biggest burl. I'm not sure what, just what my dad calls them, if that's what they are, growing off of a tree. It's like this weird growth thing. So I start walking towards it, and I get the rifle in front unloaded and in ready position. I go a few steps and hit a huge snowdrift, and my legs go right through. I keep going through the snow when all of a sudden whoosh cracking noise, followed by an unpleasant rush of water into my lungs and nose. I'm still underwater disoriented and I look up to see the sort of hole and realize I'm sinking. So flop the pack off, didn't have the straps buckled, and I don't know how, but I sort of rose to the surface where my rifle had somehow landed perfectly across where I went in. 
I used it to hoist myself out. Once I realized I had nothing but the sopping wet clothes on my back, my car keys, a set of waterproof matches, and some other odds and ends. At this point, I panic and try to run out, but I felt like a frozen rubber band. My clothing was literally frozen solid, and I couldn't feel my fingers or my feet. At this point, I calmed down, and then panic hit again, and I just kept walking. I have no idea how I made it out of there, but I did. However, when I got to my car, I couldn't get it open. The clicker wouldn't work, and I, I didn't, to actual lock, to turn, I ended up busting my window with the rifle butt and unlocking it that way. I couldn't drive, I was saking so much, so I just put my fingers on and laid my head down on the car horn, after turning the heat on, of course. And luckily, a guy who was bow hunting heard it and thought someone was trying to scare his game away. I've never been so happy to see an angry hunter in my life. He drove me to the hospital, and from there, it was all uphill. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Reading these makes my heart beat. I'm so glad to be alive. Oh, man. This next story by Mark Joe. I was in the middle of nowhere in the Nevada desert. I'm driving down a dirt road, and suddenly, the truck falls into a deep portion of the road that had been filled in with superfine slit dust that has blown off the playa. The, struck is bottom out, uh, the truck is bottomed out and unable to move. I had a little amount of water left and about 30 to 40 miles in any direction to walk on a highway, and it was a cell phone dead zone. I was screwed. I sat in the covered bed and tried to come up with some options. I could attempt to dig out but that might take forever, and I didn't have that much water. I could wait for the night and attempt to hike out over the next two days while attempting to make my water last. Maybe. Then I saw a puff of dust on the other side of the playa. I figured out it was moving fast. It was likely another vehicle, and it would be long gone But by the time I could get to it. But if it was moving slowly, it might be a grader that occasionally comes through these remote areas to maintain the road. I waited and I watched. It was moving slowly, so I grabbed all my remaining water and started hiking across the playa. About an hour later, I could see the shape of the grater. I tried signaling my compass mirror to no avail. That grater passed me and I was too out of the water and energy to run to it. I fell in behind and started following. Eventually, the guy turned around, which is when he saw me. I walked up and told him my situation. Then I asked if he could call for help or drive me out. He looked at me for a long time, then hemmed and hawed, but essentially said, I can't help you, buddy. Uh, seriously? Because I used pretty much half my water trying to get to you. Uh, sorry, can't help, he said in a rather final way, and he drove on. I considered my options. I was in the opposite direction from where I needed to be. I walked back to the truck. I'm sitting back in the covered bed with little to no water left and fewer options when I hear a rumbling sound. The grader is coming my way and clearing the road as it comes. The dude had a change of heart and cleared the road enough for me to get the truck out and on my way. I stopped at the first gas station and drank the biggest big gulp I could down and toasted it to that grader driver. Ooh. Oh, what if he hadn't come back? Oh no! <laughs> That was a flip, because you, you kind of dislike the guy for abandoning him at first, but then he comes back, so it's okay. This story is by K3Yo. I'm not sure how serious they would be on a scale, but I have two stories. Surprisingly, both were me in high school and in Girl Scouts. First, the Girl Scout troop and I were getting ready to do a Sea Scout competition. This includes rowing, sailing, knot tying, first aid, etc. The problem was none of us knew how to sail. I was going to do the sailing portion, so I had to be taught. We went out to one of the lakes. It was a cold day and the water was brisk, to say the least. Myself and one other girl were being taught by a male volunteer. The mistake was that he decided to teach us by taking us immediately out into the water and trying to teach us by giving the ropes. Well, the other girl pulled the mainsail far too quickly when a wind came and we capsized. The boat quickly turned completely over and we were trapped underneath the boat. Thankfully, I was a good enough swimmer to get out with everyone else. 
but never have I seen our troop leader freak out so much. Second, we were on a camping trip with our troop again. This time in the mountains and in February. There was a little snow left on the ground, but I thought it wasn't too bad. One night we had the fire night and my friends and I got stuck the furthest away from the warm fire. After a long day of navigating and hiking and doing competitive activities, I was tired and my clothes had been wet from sweat. Well, that plus cold night equals me getting mild hypothermia. At one point, the troop leader could not find the pulse in my neck and my heart rate, rate dropped really low. Thankfully, warm friends and a shit ton of blankets made me better, but it seems that I might be accident prone. I remember another one. I was out at the beach with a friend and we were trying to climb the rocks that jetted out into the water. Well, she is a foot taller than me, so it was a lot easier for her. I tried to grab a certain rock and I missed. It was okay because I landed in the water, but I also got pulled under my uh, by a riptide. Thankfully, it just rode it out and held my breath. After not too long, I was able to get my head above the water. I ended up with a pretty cut on my leg and a seriously freaked out friend. I still have the scar. Phew, what a badass, jeez. <laughs> All right, we're at 16. Auto moderator, let's see, says, attention, please keep in mind that the OP of this thread has chosen to mark this post with the stories tag. Therefore, any levels that are less than 750 characters will be removed. Oh, I love the stories tag. That's why all these replies are so long. I was wondering about that. Next one is by PM Me Puppies. I was born in Australia. 25 plus years later, I'm still alive. I guess you call that a long-term survival situation. Here's a list of things that could have killed me in that time. Swimming with crocodiles. Freshwater ones don't really attack humans unless provoked. I found out later there were salties in there due to flooding. Boats in saltwater croc rivers. Not sure what we were thinking here. We were in a four meter tin hull boat. Survived kangaroo attacks. They jumped into my car while driving down a dirt road at dusk. I was an idiot for going that fast at dusk. Random spiders everywhere, including a huntsman dropping from my sun visor while driving at 110 down the freeway. Falling off horses, mostly variations of horse saw stick move. Horse freaked out thinking it was a snake. Horse started galloping away crazily while I was mounting, not paying attention. Random snakes in the garden, roof, and creeks. Freakiest one was the red belly black snake swimming in the same creek I was swimming in. My friend's dad, a bush firefighter guy, reaches under the water, grabs it by the head, and escorts it away from our campsite. Four hours drive from our phone reception at the time. Bite can be fatal, although the anti-venom is pretty widely available. Two days into a five-day hike, five hike through the middle of nowhere, before my fo mobile phones were a thing, Rolled and lightly fractured an ankle. Finished the full hike with a stick as a crutch because you need to man up, it's only a sprain. Still trying to think of more. I had a post somewhere where I did a detailed list of all of the hiking bush related ones, but I can't find any of it now. Drop bears every day of my life. Forget drop bears. A threat every day no matter where you live. <laughs> what are drop bears? Do you guys know? Next post is by Nascargo19. I don't know if this is really a survival story, as it only lasted about five minutes, but it certainly wasn't the highlight of my day. Probably about 10 years ago, one summer day, we were at my grandpa's campground. Big Bodrick's campground just off of Lake Erie. Campground had three smaller lakes in it. I was on a small rowboat with my grandpa and my mom. I was probably about eight to 10 years old and didn't know how to swim. I also didn't have a life jacket on. Anyway, my grandpa thought it would be cool to yell, I'm king of the world, and jump off and land in the water. It didn't work the way he had planned it. The boat goes upside down with me underneath. I have to imagine that the only thing that kept me alive was holding onto the seat before the boat flipped. All I had to do was a grip on the seat and a small pocket of air. My grandpa and mother didn't know where I was for about a minute. My grandpa found me under the boat and somebody from another campa had put me on his boat and got me back to land safely. I probably told my grandpa about a hundred times I'm mad at you that night. 
My mom says she couldn't sleep. That was not a fun time. Thankfully, the only things lost that day was my shirt and my mom's hat. What a badass grandpa! I mean... <laughs> like, seriously, if you, if you take away all the names in that story and you're just like, Alright, people, family, and boating adventure! Someone jumps, yells they're king of the world, and tries to land in the water and fucks up and jeopardizes the safety of other members of the boat! Uh, like, that's something you would expect a child to do, not a grandfather! That grandfather must be living it up, like really, and he's gotten to be a grandpa, so, you know, either his, he had kids really young who had kids really young, or he's been living it up and is a grandpa and still has energy, and that's remarkable, honestly, absolutely remarkable. All right, everybody, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. If you want to appreciate or support our content, please do one of the four following. Like this video, watch another video, comment below with whatever you'd like, or subscribe to our channel. And if you want to get in touch with us to make content like this yourself and also make thumbnails very quickly and effectively, then please reach out to us by getting our email address from the About page on this YouTube channel. We're looking for more content creators to work with. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao!